Good afternoon, Floss Tube. This is Michelle. Today is November the 11th. Happy Veterans Day. Um, happy Armistice Day. Happy Remembrance Sunday yesterday. Um, I'm Michelle at the Striped Rose, and I haven't podcast in a while. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and show you some older finishes. I wanted to start with older finishes. So, um, I went through my stuff. And the first thing I found that I was looking for were some older Sampler Girl Jane Austen Smalls. Um, I don't know if any of these are available. I think she, Tanya has an Etsy store. Um, I think it may be mostly knitting patterns. I think she does have some uh, cross-stitch patterns. The first one, I was looking for this because I wanted to frame it for Mary Margaret. Um, a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. And I finished this in 2009. Don't have a plan here. This was actually from a magazine, probably a Just Cross Stitch. Um, I finished, oh, I don't have a date on here. This was when I liked to stitch with two threads um, on 32 count. Um... She tried to be calm and leave things to take their course. I never do that. Um, this, I guess, is Eleanor from Sense and Sensibility. Um, I wonder what that would be like. Um, I have no experience of that, actually. Um, this one, I'd rather be at Pemberley. Um, I think, Ta you know what? Tanya published these little needlework booklets. And there might have been a Jane Austen one, but I don't know. This, I think she had finished as like a little pillow hanger that you could hang on a doorknob. And I'm sorry for the terrible lighting. I can't even remember where to look or which way to turn my phone around. It's been so long. I think there was also one, uh, I'd rather be at Netherfield, maybe. Um, but I really like the colors in that. This one... I like persuasion a lot. I know that's unpopular. You know, that's not the favorite. Nobody's favorite is persuasion. And I'm not saying it is my favorite, but I really, really, really like um, persuasion, especially with Ke the movie with Kieran Hines. Um, you pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. Tell me that I am not too late. Um, I guess that doesn't stand for Captain Wentworth. I can't remember what his first name was. And Anne Elliot. I really like that one. Then, um, I didn't always stitch samplers. Um, I thought samplers were weird. My mom um, uh, stitched different things, but she did stitch some sampler. Um, she didn't, I don't think she's ever stitched a reproduction, but she st stitched samplers, things with houses and alphabets. Um, and I just thought that was weird. And I think a lot of people, um, I mean, maybe there are a lot of people that just see the samplers with the alphabets and think, wow, I love all these alphabets. Um, but I think a lot of people come to samplers over time. Um, there's a period of, what's the deal with the alphabets? Um, and I definitely had that growing up. I just couldn't. And then once you learn the history and I don't know alphabets are seductive now so I don't know but I didn't always stitch alphabets um, I stitched things that weren't samplers so I found this is from 2009 I mean the 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 those that I just showed you none of them were samplers I don't remember who this is by and I should because it's some mm, it's not Bent Creek um I can't remember who this is by. The Weathered Garden. I think this was something that my mom um, bought me, I think. Um, and it's just, it's just quirky. It has an alphabet on it because, you know, sometimes people just stick alphabets on things. Um, I really like the colors. The Weathered Colors. I don't know. I like it so much I put it in a box. I don't always think 
about getting things framed. Now this next one, I don't know if this is, I imagine this is Carriage House Samplings or The Good Housewife. It's one or the other. Um, Sarah Esch, I put my own name at the bottom. I just really like these, that's probably 3371, those letters. And that snake with his little, with his blue and his taupe. Um, those white butterflies. I just like that. Chocolatey, ice blue, taupe. Um, that's a really nice one. Um, the next one, I'm sorry, is out of print. I, I don't know how Kitten Stitcher seems to be getting so many sheepish designs um, on her website. Um, I keep checking back and I keep seeing more and more and she says they're original ones and I don't know where she keeps finding them, but um, so there's hope. There's hope. This is a sheepish designs. I can't remember if it's called Dutch Alphabet. Um, I'll show you the whole thing. That's a big old 2013. Um, this was when I could stitch on 32 count fabric and not hate my stitches. But it's just the letters and each letter has a crown. And my, I'd love to get this framed. I'd love to take up half a wall <laughs> with this. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun. And I'd like to put it in there on my blue sampler wall. But I'd also really like to do this on 40 count with a nice red and put it on my red wall. And if I have two of the same samplers hanging downstairs in my home, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over that. So look at that one, it has dogs, birds, a lot of birds. Just one angel, I think. Crowns, flowers, a lot of birds. I don't know. Maybe, oh, nope, there's, well, I did that. I don't know why I chose those two. Um, I can't, I guess they're repeated. Yeah, that one's the same as the one over X. Yeah, there's repeats. But um, that's a good one that I'd really like to get framed, and I'd really like to do over in red on 40 count. All right, so the last time I podcast was in March or April, probably March, um, and I was getting ready for, I am so thirsty. And yesterday, no, two days ago, I spilled an entire 32 ounce glass of water on my basket of mania pieces, colored threads. So, but I'm really thirsty. I'm just an accident waiting to happen most of the time. Okay, so what I, my plan is to just quickly move through all my mania starts. I only wound up doing 30. On day 31, I was just like, eh. And then I thought, well, maybe I should just push through, make myself start something on the 31st to say I've done all of them. And I thought, mm, I don't want to. So that's what I did. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go through all my mania starts and then I'll show you what I've been working on. Um, and the prob and there's some problems with the mania starts. Some charts are missing. Some fabric is missing. Um, it's kind of a kind of a mess. So um, the first thing I did was a one from Market, I think, one that I got from Market. This and this gave me fits because I just absolutely this is summer. Shall I compare the by Blackbird Designs and it was released at Market. Um, I had fits trying to find the red and um, Brenda and the Serial Starter, um, they s sent me a text message, I mean a, a private message together and they told me to use cayenne red. And so I, I got a cayenne red and it was awful. It looked like, I mean like dirt and I mean I live in a place where the dirt is red. Um, it wasn't attractive. I realized a month ago, they, they were talking about, because I was watching their podcast, they were talking about Weeks Dye Works Cayenne, um, which is beautiful. The other Cayenne, mm, not so much. But anyways, I eventually picked another red, but it's not in the bag. 
I have no idea. Oh, no, no, I wrote it down. Baked apple. Because my pomegranate, which was called for, was too red. And so I used baked, ap baked apple. Baked apple is a favorite of mine. So there's Adam. I've got a little baked apple in. The green called for was burlap. Burlap is really a variable color. Sometimes it just doesn't look right at all. But I used color and cotton. And this looks like brown. Um, but it's a seaweedy green. Color and cotton, hazel brown. It's a seaweedy. Um, so that was the first thing that I started. Red House, Adam and Eve, no surprise. Would love to get back to that. The second thing I have in a bag, oh my goodness, I can't remember. I won this on um, from Priscilla and Chelsea, and I want to say it's created to create BH, um, but it's a beautiful bag. And I started the schoolhouse sampler summer schoolhouse I'm sorry number one I'm not doing it one over one they look really really cute but I'm not doing that um, I'm not willing to do that and for this one this may be the one they told me to use the cayenne for um, but I'm using brick weak style work brick just brick yep oh haven't started that yet. All right, that'll be really, really cute when it's done. I have all the called for colors except for the reds and greens. Okay, day three of Mania was Liberty Rose, and I didn't bring the book over here. This is in the Blackbird um, Sweet Land of Liberty book that's now out of print and this is the one where there's a flower on I'm using bittersweet no ma'am no popping your claws on the furniture bittersweet 40 count which is a, um, a, a pinkish peach dusty pink color and then I'm gonna use something else a sampler brown color for a bird and they're sewn together and it only calls for three colors weeks dye works um, pink sand oak and graphite a bird and a flower on these three colors um, so I, I really am looking forward to getting back to that one some of them I'm not looking forward to getting back to. Um, but that one, yes. The first three, yes. The next one was Love Never Fails. It was a freebie from Sub Rosa, I want to say. Um, and I did it with a Victoria Motto um, ball ballet slipper, maybe. Remember fails, and I put our wedding anniversary in there. So that was a finish. Um, the next one, I didn't bring the magazine again. Um, this is from a Just Cross Stitch ornament issue. It's called Three Crowns. It says Merry Christmas. There are some nasty little queen stitches um, right there in the middle. Um... And I loved this one, and I don't know why I'm, I'm, I mean, I tell myself one bell a day, and it's not hard. It's not hard. It's quick. You know, when you stitch the same thing over and over again, you get, um, you get a pattern, you know. I'll do these first, and then I'll go here, and then it makes more sense to go here. And I just need to do it. I'm using my favorite red, 498 DMC. It really is my favorite red. 498 DC um, and I'm working on this one currently mostly because I really want that one done okay so 
so then I went to the beach. And so day six, huh, this is a free chart. Can you read that? La Comte I'm not giving you my Appalachian French. Nope, nope, nope. But um, it's a free chart. I found it on Pinterest. And I'm using Weeks Dye Works Blue Sea. I think it says on the edge of the sea. Um, I just thought that would be really pretty. I've always wanted um, for August a little basket of beachy smalls. Just a basket, not like a whole thing. Okay, this is a problem. The next day, I was at the beach. We were at the beach. It was a conference, so it was a really nice beach house. And I had a big piece of fabric, and we we had recital ballet recital weekend, and then we flew. I mean, we hit the ground running, went to the beach. It seems like, yeah, Sunday night was the last ballet recital and we drove six hours to the coast and we got there in the wee hours of the morning and we were exhausted so I was really nervous about cutting my fabric as you'll see um, so this I did rosy morning by blackbird designs it's part of their garden it's a loose feathers maybe it was their ABC Darien yep our ABC Darien um, I also got that one and that one. I can't remember. Um, I lost it. Now, this is in here. But I don't know if that's actually it or not. So that is a surprise waiting to happen. Um, I only packed one color for this. Putty. Putty's not in the color list. No, there's no putty. There is no petty in this chart, but this is the only one I packed, so uh, we're going to figure that out at a later time. Um, the next one I wanted to stitch for donkey's ears. <clears throat> this was a chart that belonged to my mother. I mean, technically, I suppose it still belongs to my mother. Um, it's another Sheepish Designs. Um, I have several Sheepish Designs in here because I was trying to use up some of my older charts that I've always wanted to stitch. This is 40 count, one over one, and I don't know if this is from the early 90s or from the 80s, but when I saw that 40 count at the time, I was just, I was just mesmerized. I, I was just, what would that be like? Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine. I mean, I stitched everything then on 28 count. I think I knew there was 32 count. Um, I was not stitching on 32 count when I saw this. I think the highest, I, well, the highest I may have stitched was, I stitched on 27 count. It was just, it just blew my mind that there was a 40 count. But I think it's beautiful. It looks very sheepish designs to me. It looks very 1991, but that's fine. Um, so I started it, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I decided to use the exact colors, you know, the 927, 223, because I have loved this chart so long. I've loved this chart since those colors were in style. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way. The next one, oh, yeah, this is a sad story. I bought all these right there's three of them nope I thought I was gonna get lucky nope there's three of them and I bought all three okay home of the brave long may she wave and land of the free I don't know where the chart is. This was not one I took to the beach. I have looked through every single bag. I've looked everywhere. I really like this one. I really think that it would be quick, but you know, here they all three are together, but 
So, anyways, that just has frustrated me no end. Okay, Land of the Free, Chillin'. Um, I think the very first Priscilla and Chelsea, um, Priscilla was working on Chillin', and I just, I fell in love with it. Absolutely fell in love with it. So I finally started it, and I finished it, and, ooh, and the yellow flowers are, this is the drawn thread, so there are specialty stitches. The candy corn is satin stitch. The bat's wings are satin stitched. This flower right here is some kind of little stitch. The spider is supposed to be a button, but I did mine on 40 count, and I went one day and tried to find a teeny tiny button, but then I decided I just didn't want to fool with it anymore, so I pulled out another sheep, another drawn thread chart and that had a ton of stitch illustrations, and I don't know what that was even called. Some kind of rosette rose thing did it. There's another spider here, but I wanted to put my not my address. <sighs> you know. Anyway, he didn't get fully finished for Halloween this year, but I still really, really like him. Um, the next one I did, this is from Land of Liberty Book by Blackbird's Designs 2. But I wanted to make it on the little candlestick, so I did it on 32 count, which means I have to use two threads, which means this is all I've done. Um, that's the Sweet Land of Liberty, and it's a little pin cushion on a candlestick. I don't like two threads. I don't know why, but I don't like two threads. Um, so the next day was Mother's Day, and I was going to start Christmas ornaments on, on uh, Sundays, but then I decided it's Mother's Day. I'm going to start what I want to start. I don't want to start Christmas ornament today. I want to start In Her House by The Good Housewife. Um, and this says, Good housewives provide, ere sickness do come, of sundry good things in her house to have some. Good aquacomposista, compa, and I don't know what that is, and vinegar tart, rose water, and treacle to comfort the heart. So this was part of the... Colonial series. There's the Bee Man. There's the Wife into Thy Garden. I can't remember how many were in there. Um, these words are done, and then it's all um, cross stitched. The background's all cross stitched, I think, in putty. Um, and I've got it was Mother's Day. That's all I got. But I'm looking forward to returning to that one because I actually have my start and the chart. That's, a, that's good. The next one is Give Thanks. Um, it either goes this way or this way, probably this way. Um, this is the Plum Street Sampler complimentary chart called Give Thanks. It's the one that has the, the little pumpkins in the middle and the pennies all around okay many many years ago many many years ago I did this on 32 count probably lamb's wool because that's what he did everything on in one period of time do I have the chart I don't have the chart I think I do have the chart, but I would have to dig through some piles. Um, Tara Tau Samplings, Miss, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Abbott and Daughters, um, Farm Girl Stitcher mentioned that she was going to do it, and it's two charts, Mrs. Abbott and two daughters, and Mr. Abbott and a pot belly and another daughter. And she said that she was going to do it all as one. And I said, well, let's do a sow. If I ever say to you, let's do a sow, just say, okay, yeah, whatever. Because 
either I'll forget by the next day or I'll have a burning desire to not stitch that by the next day. Anyway, Michelle finished hers for Mania. I mean, she finished it like on the second day of Mania. And so I thought, well, I'm going to I'm going to be right behind her, right there neck and neck with her at the finish line. So I started it on 40 count, of course. Just wanted you to see the difference of the size. And uh the problem is the clouds don't match up and the hills don't match up. I mean, it's not a problem. I mean, I've already figured it out on my graph. Um, but I'm almost, and I don't mind stitching all that 928. I like 928 a lot. I think it's a beautiful color. Um, he's got a big old belly. And it's scrawny little neck. Um, I mean, I like everything about it. I just, uh, I, and I have been plugging away on this one. So, Mr. and Mrs. Abbott and Daughters by Carriage House Samplings. And I think all the Carriage House Samplings are still available um, on the website and on her Etsy. I know it's there. We'll find it in a minute. All right. So, Mr. and Mrs. Abbott and family. The next one is Mini A&E. And this is the first of two sets by Brenda Gervais of teeny tiny ones that she tells you which Hobby Lobby frames to get and what she painted over them with. So this one, I don't know if that's exactly the right frame. But that's the frame I got, but I don't know that I'd paint it. I want to do this teeny tiny Adam and Eve. Can you see that? And I want to put it in this frame, and then I want to put it on a bookshelf. Like the fancy bookshelf that's down here that has the, the fancy books. Not all the Miss Marple mystery paperbacks that are upstairs in the hall. But I just thought that would look so pretty on the bookshelf. But um, it's going to be a while. Um, I do want to get back to that one. It's, not, it's just teeny tiny. And it is on 40 count, yeah, 40 count parchment linen. So that'll be fun. I got my frame. Um, mini, oh, the next one I'm excited about too. I was excited about all of them when I started them. 100 Ways by Plum Street Sampler. I'm really, really excited about that. You wouldn't know, but I am. I'm really excited about that. I liked, it's got Charlotte's pink, and then it's got all these dark colors. Pelican gray, blackboard, gunmetal. It was just fun to buy these dark colors, even though it looks like such a, a pink piece. So I'm really looking forward to getting back to that one. 100 Ways Plum Street Samplers. Um, the next one, I don't know really what happened on this one. This is a free design from, there's two free designs. This isn't the chart, this is just the picture. And I wanted, I don't know why, that one's the cutest. But I decided I was going to do this one, right? And I'm not even going to show you. I mean, I have, I think, four stitches of blue. Um... And it's just DMC, and it's pretty, and I hope I'll get to it. Um, Sweetland, Harvest Bird. This is one that I had picked out from my mom's stash. I think I had a hard time with the colors, and I think I've decided, because I was like, I don't want to do a brown bird. Uh, wilderness. No, not wilderness. Uh, caterpillar. I don't want to do a brown bird. It needs to be a black bird. But then the brown looks better with the rest, so I'm just going to do DMC it, and I'm going to be fine. Um, my amazing start. I hope that was DMC, because there's nothing else in there. Um, next was a um, Christmas ornament. This is from 2012. 
it's a Plum Street design. Plum Street designs. I guess I'm on a Plum Street kick right now. Just in case anybody cares, I'm a big fan of the old just cross stitch where you can just sit there and flip through all the ornaments at the front of the magazine. I don't like it section by section in case anybody cares. It's this one right here. Um, and I'm doing it on, it's a Zweigart, it's just a Zweigart, maybe water green. It's the only Zweigart 40 count that looks like this. That's just plain Zweigart. Um, and I think I'm, I'm just using DMC colors. Um, I had big plans in July to rotate working on the ornaments that I started during Mania and like just one start a week and then, I don't know, things happened, different things occurred to me. The next one has been on my list for a really long time, Good Huswife, the Tulip Garden. Um, I have both. There's a gentleman and a lady. And I think that I'm going to put my birth year on the lady and then Jerry's birth year on the, um, the gentleman because, you know, 19 something looks vintage these days <laughs> somehow. And I'm just using DMC, but I think that I changed the orange. There's orange in the border. And I changed it to something that is not, that's not here. This says I changed it to baked apple. Wow, that looks really messy. I don't know. I don't know. I may have to get restarted. Maybe I can just overthink it and paralyze myself. That doesn't look like baked apple. I thought I had used 632, but well, that'll be another one to figure out. The next one came from a book that I was really, really excited to get. Um, Sisters by Blackbird Designs. Um, it was $29. I got it when the Silver Needle had a 25% off sale at the very beginning of the year, very end of the year. I love everything in this book. I think there's five or six designs, so you're paying five or six. If you paid $29 for it, you'd just be paying five or six dollars per sampler, which is pretty amazing. Oh, I was going to show you the chart. Um, there's two sisters. I want to do both the sisters, and I just started with the sister A Shields because it was first in the book. Now, it calls for maybe orange DMC 930 or fragrant cloves, which was a little strong for me. I really like orange, but it was a little strong. And so I, <laughs> I substituted something, something that I didn't write down. I bet it was 355. It could have been 355. I don't have it in the bag. I didn't write it down. But it seems like I would have used 355 because that's a red with an orange. Um, and I think I'm using different, because I've got a blue in here, old blue jeans, that is not Banker's gray is the closest thing to a blue I see here, but I decided to use old blue jeans. So I hope I didn't make any other changes I'm going to have to figure out. Anyways, lots of surprises. Lots of surprises for me to, to try to figure out when I get back to these things. All right, the next is one that I wanted. Okay, the next is Be Thankful. And now, at the time, there was some reason why I didn't buy the cocoa linen. Um, either I didn't want to buy more things, or but it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It's on, I don't know, it's on this. And the white shows up just fine. Be thankful. 
Um, I think I'm using most of the called for colors. I hope I am because I haven't written any other. I may be using, I bet I'm using 3371 for that dark color because it says it's molasses. But I bet I'm using 3371 for that. I can't put that back in the bag because that's a whole lot of fabric. But. All right, so that's Be Thankful. Happy with that. Be Thankful. Then um, Girls in Blue. This is another curious one. There's no fabric in this bag. Um... Girls in Blue by Mary Wynn's Farm. And I really, really like that. And I think, I think this might be it. I think. But we're going to figure that out later. Oh, that's a really nice fabric, and I don't know what that is. But we're going to figure all that out later. We're not going to worry about it now. The next one is one that I am seriously working on right now. That I want to finish by the end of the year. Oh, I have a really big finish. I have to show you in a minute. This is LW Motif Sampler by Sampler's Not Forgotten. Have y'all noticed there's so many now that are, there's Sampler's Remembered and Sampler's Not Forgotten. I, I keep getting them confused. Um, this came out at market and I fell in love with it. Uh, and I'm currently working on it right now. I had fits about the red and I eventually settled on shades of, let me tell you exactly, Dinky Dyes shades of wine. I'm not going to be able to show you but I couldn't decide. Do I want a brick red? Do I want a rose red? Do I want a wine red? Do I want a cayenne red? What do I want? Shades of Wine has all the shades of red. There's rosy red. There's 498 DMC red. There's a, an orangey, bricky red. So that's what I'm going to do when I can't decide from now on. I'm going to use Dinky Dyes Shades of Wine and just have all the reds. All the reds. Um, it calls for Mountain Mist and Lexington Green, which mine are identical, pretty much. So I'm just pulling, I'm alternating which one I pull from. And, and I'm just going to not worry about it. Um, so that one's a really, really fun one. And I want to get that one done by the end of the year. And I think I can. I think I can. Remember me. Oh, this is another Sheepish Designs. This is the one that doesn't have anything with it. I started it. I wrote that I started it. But um, I don't know. I don't know where it is. It's on 40 count. The letters are supposed to be satin stitched, which looks beautiful on here. Um, we'll just have to see. That's a lot of satin stitch on linen. And since linen is uneven, you know, it's, I mean, it's uneven. You know, some threads are fatter, some are skinnier. Um, so we'll see. We'll see when I find it or restarted it, but we're not going to worry about that now. The next one I started, oh, I can't believe I didn't get much done on this one. I love this these people. Um, I have two or three ornaments that I've stitched with an old-fashioned couple on either side. Not an Adam and Eve, um, well, I mean, I guess they're types of Adam and Eve. A guy and a girl, that's an Adam and Eve on a sampler, right? No matter how they're dressed. Um, but I, I, I like them a lot. And I think I decided to use DMC on this, too. But that's all I got. Yeah, 
I need to leave my needles in my fabric. No, that's not. I know that's bad. Um, the next one I've had forever. No. No. The next one I haven't had forever. I got it um, at market. And I think I decided to use the DMC colors. Because there's some DMC color that is one of my favorite DMC colors. 840 taupe. I like 840 taupe a lot. Um, but that's as far as I got because I was littering around. My younger daughter has a phobia about, um, it's like lididopterophobia or something, the fear of fluttering. Um, it's ladybugs are the worst, but moths and butterflies and um, anything that, that flies and flutters around. So she's not a fan when I, uh, when I talk about this. I think it's beautiful. Of course, I like moths. And, and well, I don't like pantry moths or cloth or wool moths. I don't like those kind of moths. But I like, um, what is it, rosy? Rosy maple moth? Rosy something? The one that looks like Battenberg cake. It's yellow and pink on my husband. That's so pretty. Um, the next one I've had forever. It's called Know Ye by Lottie Da. Know ye the Lord is God. He hath made us. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Um, I mean, I've wanted to do this one for years. Just about everything I've wanted to do for years. And then I just didn't, I just, I don't know, I got derailed. And it's just a cluster of uh, the vine, the fruit, whatever that is. I want that one. I really want to get back to that one. Okay, and then um, <clears throat> this is, oh, I have the magazine. This is from Sampler and Antique Quarterly, Fall 2013. It's called Eleanor White House Sampler. And if you look at um, Tanya, the Scarlet House's blog, um, Instagram, and if you watch Stash Sisters tour of the Scarlet, Tanya, the Scarlet House's home, you'll see this. So it has two verses. One's the Lord's Prayer. And I think that the reason I decided to do this is because it's not one over one. The, the verses are not one over one. Um, I love those little people down there. I like the two verses and the two different colors. I like that they're not one over one. Um, and I'm just choosing random colors. I mean, basically the colors that are called for. But um, When I found that out that that was not one over one, all those words, I got so excited. Okay, here's the thing. Day 30, I told you, was my last day because on the 31st, I was just over it. It says EW. Now, that sounds like Eleanor Whitehouse, but Eleanor Whitehouse is very clearly written out on the 29th. So, I don't know what EW is. I looked through everything. I don't know what EW is, but there's a check mark through it, but I don't know. I just don't know what it is. Okay, so, I was going to show you what I've been working on. Um, just a second. I got to get the, uh, the really, really big thing that I finished. I am not on a lot of cross-stitch Facebook groups because um, I can't keep up with them because um, I get overwhelmed. Uh, but I love Sampler Heart. There's some other ones that I love too, but I forget that I love them. But Sampler Heart, um, 
comes up a lot and I see it. And there was a beautiful French sampler. Do you remember months ago when I told Michelle Rudy that we needed to just stitch red alphabet samplers? That's all we, we were just gonna stitch red alphabet samplers until we could fill a whole wall because I'd seen a picture on Pinterest. And I got really ambitious and I immediately started this, which is a needle print chart that was a freebie years and years ago. Um, I started this and I eventually finished it. And <clears throat> Heidi Kranz doing red smalls, Brenda and the serial starter have explained to us that it's a law that you must have a red works, uh, not red work, but a red sampler um, going at all time. Great, great. Well, I saw this. And you see how it has some red letters in it? I explained on Instagram. I got fooled by this sampler. I was hoodooed by this sampler. Because I started stitching it, and I thought, this is my red sampler, my red alphabet sampler. This is my red sampler. And I didn't start another red sampler. I bought lots of red samplers. I have lots of red samplers. It's not a red alphabet sampler, <laughs> but it's French. And I was really excited about Dutch, French, and German red schoolgirl samplers. Um, and I saw this lady, Michelle Wagner, who is French, and she charted this design based on her great aunt, Rosa, I don't know if it's Rosa Christ or Rosa Christ, I don't know how you would say that. She did this in 1891. Her, this is her great aunt's, a reproduction she did of her great aunt's sampler. I'm going to try to link a blog of another French stitcher. Remember, Google Translate. You too can read different languages with Google Translate. Um, who did a biography with pictures of this lady right here. She tells you um, about the childhood of this lady, you know, she what she eventually grew up and went on to do and there are pictures of her these are just different pattern stitches um my favorites are these two right here this one and this one they just look so delicate so she posted this on sampler heart and i said oh my goodness where can i get this chart and she said email it Email me, and I'll send it to you. And I, um, I finished it. Did I finish it a couple of weeks ago? Um, and I absolutely love it. I just absolutely love everything about it, except it's going to be wonky um, when I try to block it because some of these things, the diagonal, even though I tried to go across as much as I could and not warp that one especially is a little warped um, but I did it on 40 count cream and I love it so that was my big huge finish um, and I thought that it was a red sampler it, it was just in my brain that this was my red sampler but of course it's not so my plan was to finish that in September my first plan was September was going to be all fall stitching and then I heard about Sampler September, and I thought, nope, nope, I've got a plan. I'm going to do fall stitching. And two of the big fall stitching that I wanted to finish, and I could not finish. Um, the first one was this. I'm so close. Um, this is Priscilla and Hands-On Designs from their first chalkboard series that was in Just Cross Stitch magazine. I love this one. This was, this may be my favorite one. I, I don't know. There's just something about, I just love this one. So I'm doing this on 40 count shadow. And then, like a, 
crazy person. I had to start this as soon as it came out. I mean, Priscilla can turn one of these out a week. One of these jars out a week and everything else. And I don't know why it takes me so long. But um, this is also on 40 count shadow. And I got a big piece because I want to do the tulip house. It's not called tulip house, I don't think. It's the spring home. Um, those are, there were a couple other fall things that I was working on. But somewhere halfway through September, I thought, no, I do want to do Sam for September. So I wanted to finish this in September. I wanted to finish, but I finished it just now. I wanted to finish this in October. Now I'm going for maybe November. This is Isabella Johnstone. I know you've seen it. Cozy Egg finished. A lot of people finished it. Isabella Johnstone. This is in Sampler and Antique Needlework quarterly summer 2010 I used to have the subscription it's very very fortunate um, to get these every several months um, I'm getting down to the really fun bits all the flower clusters down there at the bottom I really want to finish that one by the end of the year and then I was going to finish a thousand hills by Plum Street sampler in November and then December was just going to be this free month. I, I make such amazing plans. I make amazing plans. Amazing plans. Um, but that just didn't happen. So, what I'm working on right now... Oh, let me show you one thing that I stalled out on. Oh, well, what I'm working on right now is the Isabella Johnstone, the LW Motif Sampler, the Christmas Ornaments. That's what I'm working on right now. Rotation's out the window because I just want to get some things done before the end of the year. So now I'm going to show you some Christmas things that I want to start. This I'm stalled out on, and I have no idea why. I have got this in the Joya Joie Noel. Um, this was my mom's. When I was birthing babies and, you know, wiping noses, she was... Um, paying attention and ordering Blackbird design books. Not a stitcher's journey, but she was ordering a lot of them. So that's where I got this. Um, and I mean, I've done the big old red bird. I don't know why I can't focus. And I, eventually, I, I originally got the Victoria Motto samplers, and I'm using the Victoria Motto red, and it's a good red. And there were two skeins, but I'm doing one thread because I'm doing it on 40 count. So I'm going to, I have lots of red, good red that I like to do all these red samplers. Oh, let me show you what I wanted to start right. I mean, I've always liked English samplers, Scottish, some Dutch, um, you know, that those English and American samplers, you know, the house, the alphabet. But lately, I've really been liking um, French samplers, Reflex de Soie, GGR, GGR saw when I posted my finish. I don't know if I posted my finish of Rosa Christ. I don't know if I posted it on Sampler Heart. And she saw it and said, is that a Reflex de Soie? And Michelle, um, the niece of this, the original, the stitcher of the original, said, no, no, this is my, my great aunt's, but I thought that was so neat. Um, but I've really been liking, now, of course, I like this because I'm Catholic. I'm, you know, this is, um what's on the miraculous medal oh mary conceived without sin pray for us who have recourse to thee that's not everybody's cup of tea i know i know it's okay i'm not a fan of pilgrims but here we are thanksgiving um but so i like it for the religious symbolism but there's just something different about this stitching 
and this stitching and kitten stitcher has so many reflex to swa and ggr there's just something so different about it and i almost feel like no you're an american girl and you you stitch those english samplers and those american you know colonial samplers and but i'm getting drawn into these european samplers sometimes that's silly to feel guilty about that i mean i won't feel guilty for more than a couple seconds because i'll forget but um let me oh so this is there no that's not it okay this is i did get this this is part of my haul this is the gg no the g ledger by reflex to swa it's the one that has that pear in the bottom and the red house i gave my mom the uh, my mom does junk, junk journaling, and I gave her the cover page because I thought it might be fun to use, you know, kind of like a sampler um, in a... I'm losing the plot a little bit here. Okay. Have you been to European samplers, European reproduction samplers? European Samplers. It's a website um, in German, and it's run by Sabine Tatera. I've seen her on Sampler Heart. I've seen her on some of the other Sampler Facebook groups. She has a website, and it's similar to the Scarlet Letter in that it, it breaks down samplers by country, so Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Britain, um, Germany. And it breaks them down by 20th century, 19th century, 18th century. Um, this is what I want to start next for my red sampler so that I'm not violating any laws. I think this says God protect you or God does. Oh, gosh, ladybugs. I mean, I don't like ladybugs. God protect you. I don't know what the verb is doing exactly. I don't know if he's saying God does protect you or if it's saying God asking God to protect you or he will. I don't know exactly what the verb's doing. Probably it's just saying God protect you. Um, I really want to do this. There's another one that just absolutely rips my heart open, especially today. Um, for, for Veterans Day, for Armistice Day, it's a, a red sampler, and it's a schoolgirl. And in, in on German samplers, it'll say, im Yar, in the year, such and such. This one says, im Kriegsjahr, forgive my Appalachian German, im Kriegsjahr, 1918. So it doesn't just say, in the year, 1918 it says in the war year 1918 and that just i don't know why that just gives me chills that this young girl who was doing her schoolgirl sampler she didn't just stitch in the year 1918 but she said in the war year 1918 and i just oh i don't know but anyways if you haven't been to european samplers or european reproduction samplers um, I don't know if that information will help you at all. I don't know if you can see it. It doesn't say quite that. Um, there are a lot of samplers, um, a lot of red schoolgirl samplers, French, Dutch, Belgian, German. Um, and then there are a lot of the Biedermeier um, samplers. And it's just different. Um, I mean, I love the hands across the sea samplers that are usually um, from the British Isles. Um, I love those. That's, that's my first love. But mm, some of these European ones are starting to turn my head. Okay. So I'm going to show you some Christmas designs that I really want to start. These are not, uh, this one's new. Look at that. Stacy Nash. I just watched Brenda and the Serial Starter do their Stacy Nash. I just like that big old green bow. And I'm going to do it on 40 count. And I hope I can find a, a green ribbon that'll work because I like that. But I have two black doggies. But I don't know where I could put another black doggie. 
The dogs aren't going to care. Nobody is going to care. I like her. Um, I like her. All dolled up. Little House Needle Works. I like her. Um, this one I hunted down a year or more ago. I think you can buy it just in a chart form now by um, Peace on Earth by it's by Cottage oh my goodness gracious how frustrating for you um, Cottage Garden Samplings .com. Jessica the Schoolhouse Stitcher showed it a couple of years ago one or two years ago in this magazine right here but I'm pretty sure that you can buy it a chart pack of this and it always makes me think of blackbird designs crossed with Plum Street samplers so that's just always on my wish list actually the rest of these you've always I want to do all of these I got I wanted to do just one for fall and smush the Thanksgiving and the Halloween together. Um, I didn't really want to do the witch hat and I didn't really want to do the pilgrim hat. So now nobody in the cross stitch world likes me. Um, but I wanted to smush them together. But I wanted to say the happy Halloween. I can't remember what I wanted to do. I just wanted to have one fall one. But this I'd like to have for all of winter, but I want to add some more. I want to keep the red, but add some more um, aqua and teal colors to, you know, keep it into January. This one I still want to do. Got the fabric in here. Maybe it's cold outside. Sometimes I feel like there are these charts that everybody has done except for me. Um... And this is one of them. I feel like everybody's done this one. And I am I just feel like I'm behind all the time. I felt like this, um, you know, 10 years ago in blog world, I felt like, excuse me, um, I felt like everybody was, um, everybody was stitching Isabella Johnstone. I remember when a whole lot of people were stitching that. And I just, I always feel like I'm behind, but I'm doing stuff. Of course, I want to do this, and I have the fabric, and I have the threads all pulled. Of course, I want to do that. Okay, I guess those are the only Christmas ones I want to do. So, I've got just a tiny bit of haul, not much, um, to show you. I may have already showed you this one. I really want to start this one for Mary Margaret, and I went and got the fabric. Uh, the fa I got the fabric. It says Nantucket Brew. I think I'm just going to use um, Navy Bean. But I got the uh, the threads, the things that you stitch with, the threads. Here's Mrs. Abbott and daughter. I knew it was in there. Mr. and Mrs. Abbott and daughter. I'm sure you could still get that either on the Carriage House website or in Kathy Barrick's shop. They're very cute separately. They're very cute together. They're just cute. Um, here's the that that I did. Okay, I really want to stitch this. I've had it for a while, and I very, very slowly collected. I've got most of the silks. Um, I would get like one or two silks every once in a while for it, because I really wanted to do this on the silks. Um, but I don't know what fabric I want to use, um, because I don't like... It calls for Vintage Autumn Gold, 46 count. I'm going to use 40 count. I don't like vintage fabrics very much. I don't like modeled fabrics. Um, except for, of course, um, except for the Baby It's Cold Outside, I'm going to do on Vintage Mocha. And one of these days, I am going to start, I've showed you this before, The Fishing Lady. I'm going to do her on Vintage Tundra. Is that Vintage Tundra? Yeah. No, it just says Tundra. Oh, I thought I got the Vintage Tundra. Well, never mind. Huh. 
now I'm confused about that. But I don't know what fabric I want to do. Could I just get a um, an exemplar, not the light exemplar, but the regular exemplar? Um, Laura and Brenda were talking a lot about fawn. They were talking about vintage fawn. Could I do it with just plain fawn? I mean, this sort of has a gray cast. I prefer brown. Um, so I don't know. But this I really want to start in the new year. The other thing I really want to start in the new year is Caroline Broomhead. This is not new. I've had this for a while. Um, Nicole at Nicole Needleworks just showed her finished and framed version. Um, she used the called for Ligonier Latte. And I got a 40 count Ligonier Latte that I'm going to use. Um, I've got most of the, no, I don't have most of them. I've got the red and the green. I can do the flowers and the vine. I can go ahead and start the flower and the vine and the brown. Um, she has her conversion on her blog. Um, and I wrote down her conversion, but I don't have those, so we'll just see. But I got the reds and the greens um, and the fabric. So one of these is going to be my New Year's Day start. And it may come down to it being this one just because I am, I have the fabric and I like the fabric a lot. Thank you to April, May, June, Stitcher. What's your, April, what is your, April, May, June, Stitcher. April, May. Oh my goodness. I can't remember your channel name. Um, thank you. I put a call out on Instagram to give me the DMC um, equivalent of Ligonier Latte because I was on the fence about whether to order it or not because I don't have a local needlework store where I can walk in and see the fabulousness that is nice linen. Um, and so she helped me out. She pushed. She enabled me. I did buy this one. This is back to solid <laughs> British um, style samplers. I love this. And you know what it is? It's the yard. It's all the green grasses. The choppy squares of green. Isn't it funny that that's what it looks like from an airplane? But of course, these people who did these samplers, they never, um, they never saw what it would look like from an airplane. But anyways, I love this. Um, Nicole's needlework, Nicole said she was going to do it in DMC. And if Nicole's going to do it in DMC, then, then that's probably what I ought to do. Um, so I just don't know about the fabric, though, again. But I really do like that one a lot. Um, I ordered this most recently. More Stacy Nash. Those pears. I love pears. <coughs> There's a... Is it a liqueur? Floir? Um, and I've had it once. And it's not something that... The, I mean, if I were given a glass of it, I, I mean, a little glass of it, I would drink it. But... Um, I really like pears. You remember? I don't know if this was just a Southern living thing. Um, I know my mother-in-law did it, and my mother certainly did it, um, for salad. In the South, salad is really a tricky thing for other people to understand, because sometimes they say, why are you calling that salad? That's Jello and Cool Whip and, you know, marshmallows. How is that a salad? It's almost Thanksgiving. Can you tell? I'm thinking about Jello and Cool Whip and uh, mini marshmallows. That's a salad here. Uh, macaroni and cheese is a vegetable here. It's it's very difficult to understand. But anyway, so when we were growing up, for salad, the salad course, you know, before you had your spam and your lima beans, um, was half a pear out of a can, a dollop of mayonnaise, sprinkle it with shredded cheddar cheese, and then crown it with a maraschino, maraschino cherry. And that was your salad. Um, and we make fun of my mother-in-law and my mother still for some, and they both go, well, I'm sure we got it from Southern Living. I'm sure, you know, because that justifies everything. But anyways, I really like pears. 
I like them to eat them, not with my hands. And I like them, um, I was going to say I like them to decorate with them. I have no pear decorations. I have a set of four decorative plates that aren't even on the wall anymore with pears. But I really like it. I really like both of them, but especially those pears. Anyways, that's enough. That's, that's enough of that. This, I'm sure I've showed you that I have this. Oh, now this. This may have been an eBay or a... Um, stash unload. Sometimes you find the oddest things that you've never seen before. I just thought those colors were just so pretty. Um, they are DMC 221, 224. What is that blue? That pretty, pretty blue green. 502. Yeah, those are my colors. This is the E.E. E. Hollingworth 1885 Sampler. Came out in 2001 by Heritage Samplers. So that gives you shade. And it says, Jesus is our shepherd. That is just the sweetest thing. I've never seen that before. Um, that must have been Stash Unload. Or maybe eBay. Oh, this is um, Marietta, Georgia. Somebody local. Um, I think I showed, I showed on Instagram that I finally got this. Okay, now this is an interesting. Okay, so I got this on Stash Unload months and months ago. I want to do it, but I don't really want to do the wools. Um, we have problems with wool moths. I don't know. Um, I had to throw away some wool hats. Um... I mean, we, I, I vacuum, I, I clean, I put lavender oil everywhere. I don't, even though it's going to, it would be sealed up and framed eventually, I just don't want to stitch with wool. I don't want any more wool. I don't want to, any more insect buffets. Um, and I think there's an insect that eats everything. Years ago, Mary Margaret played violin and she wanted to quit. And I may, I was like, no, you need to give it a good try. Well, seven years later, my parents said, I think she's going to. Seven years, that's a good try. Anyway, so she stopped. And we were renting a violin. And I didn't give the violin back to the people I was renting it from for like two months. And when I took it in, the violin had been, you know, sitting in the corner, wherever it had been sitting. Whatever insect that eats bow strings had reproduced and died and sown their seed and brought forth and were fruitful and eaten all the strings in the violin. How did those bugs know? And he's like, this is a bug that just eats violin strings. How did those bugs know that there was a violin in my house? And they could just, you know, did they come from all? How did they know? I don't understand a lot of things about insects. But anyways, I don't want any more wool. I mean, I knit. I knit with wool. I got enough wool. I'm not going to. I don't want to stitch with wool. I don't want more wool that I feel like I have to seal up in bags and I, 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 I rub a little lavender oil inside the bag. I rub lavender oil outside of the bag. I put cedar blocks everywhere. I just can't do any more wool. Not that that's what you came here to see or hear about, the wool story. Okay, so this was the thing, though. The reason I ordered that is because from the same seller, I wanted, I wanted to get this, I think. There is another Chessie and Me Autumn Sampler that looks very, very similar to this. And when I got it, I thought, oh no, this is the one I already have, but it wasn't. So I have two different ones, but I can't find the other one to show you. So I don't know if this is the one I had or this is the one that I got, but um, I love them both. I love the checkered house, pumpkins, a blackbird. That's fantastic. Now, this next one, maybe this is French. I don't know. Ooh, this is stitched in Gentle Art Simply Wool, too. Um, this must have come out at market, did it? And I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Christian Geisinger? Oh, yum, yum, yum. I mean, oh, a little pop of aqua and all those roses. Do you see those roses? Isn't that fabulous? And then the aqua? I mean, that's, why haven't I started that? I have no idea why I haven't started that. That's beautiful. 
Um, I love that. Now this one, I get these two confused. They look nothing alike, but for some reason I get them confused. This is by Antique, no it's not. This is by Cross Stitch Antiques. And I think it came out at Market too. It looks nothing like the other one. I don't know why I get them confused, but I love it. And look, that's like greeny, and that one's like aqua-y. Aren't those beautiful? I don't even know what it says. Jesus, my God, to thee I fly. Gosh, I just love that. And that's it. That's it. That's everything I have to show you. Um, I hope you saw something that you liked. I hope you enjoyed um, seeing basically a trip through my stash. Um, I will try to put up the information, the blog post that gave Rosa Christ's um, biography. Um, just like we're learning, you know, the hands across the sea samplers. When you can really connect with the person who originally stitched that sampler, it just enhances your stitching pleasure. It just enhances everything about the experience to really feel connected um, to another person. So I want to tell you happy Veterans Day again. And I don't know when I'll be back, um, but I'll be watching Floss Tube, and I'll be looking at your Instagrams, and um, I'll see you later. Bye.